Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. On this week's topic, I wanted to discuss ways in which you can build your confidence. I've spoken about confidence before, but I feel like every so often when you feel a little bit demotivated and just detached from your surroundings and just feel like you're losing yourself, we need a little reminder or a little nudge to just bring us back to the present and make us realize who the hell we are and just to own it. And I feel like that's why I've had recently many of you message me and ask about building confidence or loving yourself. And I just need to do a refresher video just to show you guys and teach you certain mind shifts that are necessary for us to stop thinking of ourselves differently and just trusting ourselves more and having more confidence in our word and who we are. If you haven't been to my page before, welcome. I'm Hamasa and on this corner of the internet, I look at personal development, mental and emotional well-being, as well as day-to-day -day issues. Please subscribe to my page so that you're up to date with my content and please like and comment on this video, introduce yourself in the comments below. And if you have any video suggestions for me, please do write them down so that I can get around to making them for you. Um, and if you're a returning follower, then welcome back. So I just wanted to get into it first and foremost, that the way we think about ourselves and how we speak about ourselves has got to do a lot with how confident we feel in ourselves. And that's all well said and done if we can just go to sleep, wake up one day and suddenly wake up feeling very confident. But unfortunately, it's not how it works. You can sit and, sit and tell yourself, I'm so confident, I know what's going on, I'm, I know what I'm doing, I'm cool, I have this. But you may not necessarily feel those things. So regardless of how you're thinking, that's not going to reflect in your actions or how you carry yourself. So that's why it's important for us to understand that whenever it comes to confidence, it's all about building confidence because it doesn't just happen overnight. It's not a quick progress. You don't just wake up and you feel confident. You build on it and it's slowly and it's one step at a time and you work on things and you get to know yourself and you develop it bit by bit. So the first thing that I would recommend for you guys to do is just to shift that mindset altogether and to try and practice these bit by bit and start applying them so that you have confidence in everything that you do. And the most important thing and the one that I feel like is the hardest for us to adapt is to get this thought and notion through our heads that regardless of the outcome of the situation, I am going to be okay. I may not like the outcome, it may not go down the way I planned it to, but either way, I will not die from this. I will not starve from this. I will not not survive this. I will be okay. Whether this goes to plan or it doesn't. My life is not in danger. And the minute you start accepting this mindset or this thinking, straight away you just have better confidence in making decisions, in taking risks, in accepting situations because you know that you are not in immediate danger. I know a lot of the times when something goes wrong or things fall apart, first things like, oh my God, I'm gonna die. My parents are gonna kill me. My partner's gonna kill me. But when you start understanding and accepting that no one's going to kill you and you will not die from this, then everything else becomes kind of like, well, it's fine. Like whatever happens, it's either a lesson won or a lesson learned. It's nothing lost in this. Either way, the failure is also a huge benefit in the grand scheme of things of you growing and getting to know yourself. So you're going to be okay. Doesn't matter what happens. And that on its own should give you that boost of confidence of speaking up, taking that step, doing what you're scared of because you will be fine. So having this mentality of it is what it is. It's actually a lot more helpful than just being a saying because this is you accepting that whatever the outcome may be, I'll deal with it, I'll face it, I'll work on it, and I'll be fine after it. It's life, it happens, and it really is just, it is what it is. 
and accepting that will give you a lot more Ooh, Alex is going crazy, sorry. Accepting that is a, just allows you to be in control of situation, whether it goes to your plan or not. So that's why it's very important for us to start thinking this way. The next thing is to understand that you're true to your morals and values and what you believe in and what you like. And so wherever you go, whatever you do, you're going to show up as your best authentic self and that is who you are. Now, how people take that or read it has nothing to do with you. That is not your responsibility. That's other people's interpretation of you, but you are not responsible for that. You can't make people think differently or believe different things if they're determined on seeing what they want to see. That's not your job, nor is it your responsibility. So as long as you are true to yourself, you believe what you're doing is right, and you know you are authentic to yourself, whatever you do elsewhere is really not, how people take that is really not your responsibility. Now, having said that, it doesn't mean that you go about disrespecting people acting a certain way, being rude, because if they find you rude, then that's not your responsibility. That's not down to you. Because you, especially when it comes to relationships, you're not responsible for how they behave, but you are responsible to them, to maintain that respect, to maintain that boundary, to maintain that moral and value that you two share together. So, you do your best. It doesn't mean that you're going to start acting a type of way just because people can think what they want. It's, it's not about that. It's about you being or doing the best that you can do. And if that's still not enough for people and that's still not okay or acceptable, then that's not your responsibility. This isn't a free pass for you to just walk around and think that, you know, I'm amazing and there's nothing that I'm doing wrong. It's all about how you take that and just be pure disrespectful or act savage as nowadays people want to call it. That's never acceptable and it's never okay. As long as you're sticking to your morals and values and doing the best that you can do, the rest is not your responsibility. My next point in shifting the way that you think about yourself and how you speak about yourself to build confidence is to literally how you speak about yourself. Even if it's done in a jokey manner or, you know, you're trying to make yourself the butt of the joke and da-da-da, your brain registers all of those things. So if you're constantly making yourself the butt of the joke to entertain other people or to make them laugh, then you're putting yourself down and your brain begins to accept that this is how you should be spoken of, about, or spoken to. And so you're accepting being talked down to or made fun of because you're doing it yourself. So even if you don't mean it or mean it in a jokey way, your brain registers that and thinks that's okay for people to speak about you like that. Having said that, again, it doesn't mean that you're very uptight and you can't take a joke and you're always very, very serious and you won't let anyone ever say anything or you can't laugh at yourself. No, that's all good and well. But as long as there isn't this continuous theme of you just putting yourself down to keep other people happy, or always be very unkind to yourself because you're literally chipping at your own confidence. It's about knowing your worth and value, understanding who you are, establishing that. And then if people are making jokes or it's something that you feel comfortable about, you can have a laugh, but also know and understand that that validation or that shift doesn't mean that you're any less now or you're anyone different. You already know your worth and value. And that's why it's funny and you can laugh about it. So there's a difference in how you allow people to speak about you and how you speak about yourself. My next tip for you guys would be to not needing to always be right. Having this mindset of having to prove the point. No, but they need to know that I was right. I need to have the last word. It's not always healthy, nor is it good for your confidence. It doesn't really do you any good wanting or needing to be right because the minute you're not, you feel completely depleted, your ego is bruised, you can't handle it, and so your confidence is crushed. 
So understanding that sometimes the impact of what we do to someone that's important to us and we care for is way more important than our intention. So maybe our intentions are clean and we didn't mean to harm this person, but the action is still hurtful and impactful. And in that instance, you wanting to prove your point that you were still right because your intention was clear, doesn't take away the hurt of the person who's received it. And so that's not right in treating people like that. So this need to always prove a point or knowing that you're right shouldn't really be there all the time. You, it should be circumstantial, it should be objective, you need to look at the situation and who's on the receiving end. And sometimes knowing and understanding that, you know what, I messed up or I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, I, my intention was right, but I went the wrong way about it. It's also building your confidence and making you understand that your ego isn't so bruised when someone turns around and says, well, no, I still don't accept this. You get both sides of the argument. You get that this is where I was wrong. Or even if I'm wrong, it doesn't mean that I'm any less of a person or who I thought I was. It just means that as a human being, I'm making mistakes, which I could be responsible for and I can learn and grow from. So this need to always be right isn't, it's actually quite detrimental. You have to know when you're right and when you're not, even if your intentions are clear. Being wrong and putting your hand up and taking responsibility for that doesn't take away from who you are or shouldn't really affect your confidence. The next thing would be to do things, it's kind of counterintuitive because when you're very fearful or scared of something and it really affects your confidence, then you choose to run away from it or avoid it because you're not confident. But in order for us to build that confidence in that area is that we have to face it. So if it means about public speaking, then we're gonna have to overcome that and build our confidence on it. And how could you build on something if you don't face it? If you're sitting at home in your own comfort zone and you're never put in a place where you have to public speak, but that's a requirement of your job and therefore you don't wanna apply to it or you feel really crappy being in that job because they are asking you to do something that's out of your comfort zone. Now, the important thing in this instance is to remember not to push yourself too far. If you suddenly want to face this fear to build your confidence and you decide to do it in a room full of 500 people, then naturally you're going to push yourself to the other extreme and feel really crap about it and just want to run away and not want to face it. So that's really throwing yourself out of your comfort zone. The best way to deal with that and to face things that you're a little bit not, um, where you're a little bit less confident in, is to do it still within your comfort zone. So do it to your friends and family. Have a room, ten, room full of 10 people and do your speech or do your public speaking and build it up that way. Don't throw yourself in the deep end trying to face your fears to build confidence because it's just going to push you over the brink and make you not want to ever try it again. So the important part here is to do it bit by bit, but make sure that you are facing and doing things that are taking you out of your comfort zone because that's where all the growth and building really happens. When you're thrown in the deep end and you have to figure it out. Growth doesn't happen in the comfort of your own home or environment. Um, so it's important for us to do things that are taking us out of that comfort zone in order for us to build our overall confidence. My last tip for you guys to shift your mindset into a more confident way of thinking is to learn to say no and learn to say yes only when and if you mean it. Because it's very, very easy for us to fall into trying to do things for other people in order for them to like us, to want to hang out with us, to be around us, to keep them happy, which then translates in you constantly neglecting yourself because you're so busy trying to make things work with this other person or keep this other person happy. So that generosity slowly turns to resent because you're saying yes when you don't mean it, and then over time that builds up resentful to resent towards this person because you don't really want to do those things. You're just doing them because you feel pressured into doing them. So learning to say no and doing it in a way that doesn't necessarily affect the friendship 
is is a very healthy way in developing your confidence and being more self-aware of yourself and prioritizing yourself and your wants and needs so only say yes when you really mean it and it's coming from you not because you feel pressured that you have to that's the only time that it gets considered as genuine generosity of you wanting to help because you're doing it because you want to not because of peer pressure or the dynamic of the relationship or the fact that you feel that you've always done it you haven't said no and you're too scared to shift that so you're not speaking up i have another more detailed video about this which i'm going to link for you guys so that you can just see how what's an easy way or how to learn to say no because as much as it's such an easy thing to most of us, some people find it very, very difficult to say no and stand up for yourself, which also affects their confidence and how they view themselves and just overall who they are because they're too busy running around keeping everybody else happy and neglecting themselves. Now, if you think of confident people, usually they're so set in their ways that this whole needing to prove that they're right, needing to prove what they say is true, it's just not there anymore because they don't feel the need to prove it. They already know their worth and value. And so what you think of them is very irrelevant to them. That confidence comes from them. That comes from them learning to say no, knowing that they don't always need to be right, knowing that they don't need to prove a point, understanding that it's just what they think of themselves and how they view themselves. And so that's when you, your happiness and your well-being is independent on other people's emotions and how they feel about you. So in order for you to be confident and love yourself, you have to apply certain <clears throat> thinking mechanisms and shifts in the way you see yourself and practicing them for that to be built and become your natural state of thought. So it doesn't happen overnight. You have to consciously make an effort, be productive in the way you think, be aware of how you think and talk of yourself and make sure that you slowly build up and teach people around you how to speak about you, how to think of you and how to treat you. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. Every now and then we all need a little boost of confidence and just to be reminded of who we are. So um, I hope that this video has done that for you. Please do subscribe to my page and please like and comment on this video. And I can't wait to see you guys here again next week. Thanks for watching. Mwah.